Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is a what do you think video rather than what do I think. Um, I'm realising now that we are getting warmer summers and drier summers. Um, this might not continue. It could be just a little fad. But certainly over the last three years or so, I've struggled keeping the heat down. So I was bored this afternoon. I've been looking at things like air conditioning units and <clears throat> bottom line is they're no good for in here because one of their priorities is to dehumidify the air well that's the last thing I want in here so an air conditioning unit as such is a non-starter so I had a look at the um, evaporative coolers the swamp swamp coolers as they're so called now these sound great on the surface until you actually realize that they only work if the air coming into them is dry. Now you'll have to excuse the kit coming on, that, that's just how it is at the moment. But what happens in here practically, it's happening now, is my hot air is attempting to be sucked out by the extractor fan. And that's replaced via the inlet fan with air from outside. So what I need to know is how humid is that air outside? Obviously a hell of a lot hum less humid than it is in here at the moment. Um, but nonetheless, when my inside air is being sucked out and replaced by outside air, I'm losing my humidity. Now a swamp cooler is based on evaporative cooling. It, it's, a, it's a natural phenomenon. It happens to clay pots when they're wet and the water evaporates. It cools. It's, it's just a, a, a process. Um, so they work on that principle. But to get one to work in here it's got to be fed with dry air. Yeah? So my thoughts are where my inlet fan in fan is okay I'd have to sacrifice some shelving. That can be worked on. But if I had an evaporative cooler directly in front of that inlet fan with some sort of covering construction to confine the intake of the evaporative cooler to the air that's being drawn in by that inlet fan because there's no point in feeding it the air that's ambient in here, it's too moist. It'll stop the evaporative cooling process. It's got to work with drier air. So if I made a sort of, ah, now the fog has come on, that'll miss me lens up, but that's just how it is at the moment. So my idea is an evaporative cooler, it'll have to be a pretty heavy duty unit too, um, sat in front of the inlet fan with a sort of enclosure around it so that the air that goes into the evaporative cooler is the air that's just come in from outside. Now you have to bear in mind that it would be connected up to the extractor and the inlet fan so it's effectively on a thermostat so it would only be called on when the temperatures get high when the temperatures are lower the extractor up there and the inlet fan don't come on in which case my humidity is maintained there's not a problem it's only at the point I exchange the air that I've got the problem um, <clears throat> obviously that problem occurs when the sun comes out and the temperature in here starts to climb. Uh, on a dull day none of that would be needed. So it's only on sunny days and I won't say hot days, it just needs to be sunny. The sun comes through the glass, that's what causes the heat. It's not the sun in itself, it's, it's the sun through the glass into a confined space. So. Um, some thoughts. I mean, some of you might be out there using swamp coolers. I'd, I'd like to seriously know how effective they are um, when you're working in a, a greenhouse sort of environment where the idea is to keep the humidity up. Now, a swamp cooler adds humidity into the air, so it serves two functions if I can get it to work. First of all, it's going to cool the air down that's coming in and add humidity, which might alleviate the workload on Hurricane Hector down here, which has currently got his top off, because the cooling effect is more dramatic with the top off. Unfortunately, it uses quite a bit more water at the same time. But 
a lot of Hurricane Hector's hard work is being negated by sucking the air out of the inlet fan trying to keep it cool. It's like a catch-22 in here, the genuine article, you know. But I'm getting 28 to 30 degrees in here, and I would rather that was 24 to 26 on a more regular basis. 26 is a perfectly adequate high. There's nothing in here that needs temperatures higher than that. And unfortunately, there's quite a bit in here that would prefer not to even have it as high as 26. But the difference between 26 and 30 is quite dramatic. And we're talking centigrade here, not that old fur fur fashion stuff called Fahrenheit. <laughs> anyway, what do you think as an idea? Could I get that idea to function? Because an evaporative cooler that's big enough to do the job is not exactly a cheap item. We're, we're looking at over £250 for that unit, so it's got to earn its keep. Um, it's not directly coming out of Roger's pocket, which is effectively Roger's wine fund and food fund. It would be coming out of the YouTube money, so I wouldn't begrudge paying for it as long as it's going to do its job and take four or five degrees off of my top temperature and only when necessary yeah so none of that gets used in the winter that and the inlet fan and if i had a swamp cooler would all be just shut down so this it would only get used in the summer but then hurricane hector only really comes on in the summer you know in the winter months when it's cooler i don't want high humidity would start kick off some rot and all sorts of things. I just need an ambient humidity relative to the temperature. The higher the temperature, the harder it is to get that humidity at the right level. So, uh, what do you think? It's one of those, what do you think videos. <laughs> anyway, ideas, thoughts, anybody tried these things? I know Oliver, Oliver's greenhouse, I know that sort of channels shut down and everything now but he had a big swamp cooler and I'm pretty sure because it was a, an old unit it contributed quite highly to his running costs which was one of his objections to carrying on with his orchids I still don't get where he got those figures from I really don't he, he, he estimated 300 quid a month in the winter time um, whereas I'm looking at more like 20, 30 quid a month? I think he might have got a zero in the wrong place. <laughs> anyway, my running costs out here are, are manageable. I don't object to them. I don't begrudge them. This is my hobby. It's what I like. So see what you think. Um, you know, I mean, Danny uses an aircon unit, but she only uses it during the day. She's just done a video about the problems inherent with that, the running costs and the fact that she can't cool down at night because her they, you know, her outside temperatures are warm. She lives in Cyprus, not in the UK. <laughs> you know, so um, we all have our environmental problems, but I'd like to take a bit more control of mine if it's going to work. I'd hate to buy a unit like that and then find it wasn't actually doing the job and it wasn't lowering the temperature in here because it was sucking in humid air and it sort of defeats the object. So, uh, yeah, any of you that have got experience, tried these things, found that they worked or found that they didn't work and why, I'll have all that. Chuck your comments in and um, help me out here. Need to get this place five degrees cooler on days like this. I've got clear blue sky out there at the moment, yeah? And I've just taken my little gadget with the temperature and humidity on it and the clock outside and put it in the shade because I want to see what the humidity level is of the air outside to know what would be coming in that inlet fan. You know, I mean, if it's 60% humidity outside, there's no point. I mean, no point at all. Because the evaporative cooler wouldn't do much. It wouldn't work. Yeah, so say what you think, including stupid idea. <laughs> Spend your money on something more sensible. You know, whatever. I don't mind. I've asked the question. Let's see what we get. See you next time. And sorry about the noise, but I'm not shutting all this down on a day like this to do a video. Oh, I'll just quickly show you something. <coughs> Guess who missed everything in bloom on the 8th and actually opened its blooms last night? It's my little Neo Fenesha, the variegated one. 
So it opened overnight. It was there this morning um, when I came in. So now I need to come out again after dark if I'm still up and still awake. Bear in mind it gets dark quite late at the moment. You know, we're in our period of longest days, but uh, the fragrance on this at night is quite powerful despite being small. Small and delicate. And for some reason that's acceptable. Whereas to me, that isn't. I still can't put my finger on what opens. I think it was probably because I was expecting more. Whereas with the Neo Finesches, I know exactly what to expect. Um, and quite honestly, I didn't expect it to bloom. So uh, anyway, some pretty new flowers. Um, not in their colour, but the fragrance at night, after dark, and the delicateness of those blooms will have some of that. So I just thought I'd tag that on the end. And I'll see you next time. Oh, my um, giant brassier, um, when I bought it off Sarah, um, she said, I don't think those blooms are going to last much longer. It's been out a while. Um, she was right. <laughs> so that spike's going. This one's going. This one, I don't think it's going to be around too much longer either. And when the spikes are gone, the plant becomes accommodatable, if that's such a word, because it's then just a pot with a plant in, as opposed to over a metre long spikes sticking up. But yeah, the telltale sign is the purple spotting, yeah? So gone, going, and in the not too distant future, gone as well. So uh, it was nice while it lasted, and now I've got five strong new growths to look forward to probably next year. And if I can get five more spikes on that plant, I will be over the moon. Pretty good stuff that will be classed as. So. Uh, yeah, so that plant will be gone soon as far as blooms are concerned and it will just be another plant growing on. Bit of a giant, but um, not a problem. I've got somewhere to put the plant, but I can't put it there with the spikes on it. <laughs> and then next year I'll have to worry about the spikes as and when they grow, but um, they'll be allowed to arch over next year. Um, and I'll try and get them all arching over in one direction, um, not out of all sides of the plant um, because obviously that would take up a huge amount of space so I'd like to try and get them to probably have to train them to get them all to come out in one direction and then from up on that shelf they can arch down here and look absolutely wonderful <sighs> right see you next time thanks for dropping by as I say sorry about the noise but that's how it is at the moment just an add-on to this video, um, I'm in the middle of putting it together and I can't be bothered to take the camera out into the grow room so, so I'm just pointing it at the computer screen. I'm in the middle of putting a video together which this bit goes on the end of. Um, my little unit that I took outside registered 25 degrees centigrade with a humidity level of 35%. Now obviously that would vary depending on, like if it, if it had chucked it down with rain all day yesterday and the sun came out today, that humidity would be quite a bit higher. And the idea of my functioning um, evaporative cooler would be a little bit restricted during today because the humidity of the air coming in would be higher. But generally speaking, um, I'm pretty sure that our ambient humidity in the UK outside is relatively low and as long as that's true on those days I think the evaporative cooler should do its job. Anyway back to the um, original question you tell me.